This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Detroit Tigers face the Texas Rangers for a Tuesday night game at Arlington Stadium on May 17, 1977. Detroit was coached by Ralph Houck and were at best an average and aging team. Their future was all still in the farm system. They started the season off slow with a 14-18 and 18 record. Texas was a team on the rise and came in with a 16-14 and 14 record under manager Frank Lucchese. They had a few young stars like Jim Sumberg and Mike Hargrove, along with a collection of solid vets like Burt Campanaris, Toby Hara, Gaylord Perry, and Burt Blylevin. This audio recording is from the Detroit radio broadcast featuring announcers Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. This is only the second meeting between these two clubs. Doyle Alexander now in the uniform of the Texas Rangers. I had uh, said earlier he had a career record of 13-3. and three. I'd like to amend that to 11-3. and three. That's bad enough. He was 4-1 and one against the Tigers last year, winning two and losing none while with Baltimore before going in the trade in June to the Yankees and then while with New York. He won two and lost one and pitched a near no-hitter uh, against the Tigers last year. He's on the mound. Ron LaFleur in the batter's box here for the play-by-play, Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul Carey. Hi, everybody. Ron in the waiting, and here's the first pitch to him. He swings and taps one toward shortstop, fielded by Campanaris. Throw to first, he's out. So LaFleur went up there hitting 242, hits the first pitch, and bounces out to short. Tito Fuentes, he'll be batting left-handed against the right-hander Alexander. Tito hitting 310, batting a much better right-handed than left. Big breeze, a booming in from the outfield. It'll be Hara at third, Campaneris at shortstop, Wills at second, and Hargrove at first, comprising the infield for the Rangers. In the outfield, they've got Washington in left, Benicus is in center, and Grebe is in right. There's a ball in too close, the curve ball. He started the month, but bit. Ken Henderson on the disabled list. Pulled a leg muscle uh, on a hit and run play uh, last week. There's a bunt attempt, and it is past the third baseman down to shortstop. Tampy can't make a play, and Fuentes is on with a bunt single. He picked his spot. He hit it wide of the third baseman and uh, slowly toward short. Campanaris came in, field of the ball. Could not make the play. It'll be a base hit. Well, they get rid of one of those Alexander no-hit bids in a hurry tonight. Yeah, he's a man who flirted with the no-hitters so many times in the last couple of years. A couple of times against the Tigers. Here's Mankowski moved up to number three in the batting order. Rusty Staub out of action. He has a full muscle on the side. Mankowski batting 344, and he takes the strike. Alexander, basically a slider and a sinker pitcher. Big, tall right-hander from Alabama. Steps on the mound. He delivers. The runner goes. The ball is swung on and fouled away. They had Fuentes moving, but he'll have to come on back. Two strikes, the count on Mankowski. He'll be followed by Ogilvy. Ogilvy is ailing. He has a severe bruise on his right arm. Sustained in the series in Milwaukee. He can uh, swing the bat not very well. Now the set by the right-hander, Alexander. He flips one over to first baseman Hargrove, and back in time is the other Fuentes. No score, first inning, the man on and the man out for the tie. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it away. Right down below us, above the screen. Alexander so far throwing nothing but strikes in the early part of this game. The floor bounced out, and then a bunt single puts Fuentes on first base. That's where we are now. Mankowski waiting on the strike two delivery. It's a wide one. Sunberg uh, doing the catching. Outfield almost straight away on Mankowski. Still a good bit of daylight left. It's uh, cloudy, however, at the moment. For the first, Fuentes back standing up. Well, the Rangers have been thought off and on uh, so far this year. They've not been able to get a big streak going. Throw to first, he's back safely again. Jerry Newdecker right over there on top of the play. Tigers came in here Sunday night, spent their off day in uh, Texas. And resuming action here this evening. The pitch is a tip foul, I believe, out of the mitt of Sunberg. One and two, the count stays. He's trying to check his swing, the ball nicks the bat going by. 
Ogilvy taking a couple of practice swings at the on-deck circle. Now, Fuentes uh, leads off again. Alexander to the set position delivers. It's a pitch out, but Tito's not moving. 2-2. Two -two. Tomorrow night, we'll uh, see two veterans go at each other, Gaylord Perry and John Hiller. John uh, getting a start. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Ball is slugged into right field foul. Back into the seat. He pulled it a little bit too much down the line, over the bullpen, where the Rangers warm up. Perry is two and four. Hiller has a record of one and three so far. Gaylord will be going for his 100th win in the American League. I don't mean he has won 100 in each league. Only Cy Young and Jim Bunning have done that before him. 100 wins in each of the major leagues. Here's the set now. Alexander delivers. It is a ball off. What is held on at first base that time. A full count now on Mankowski. Hargrove holding on the back, trying to keep the weighties close. Mankowski digs in. It's the scoreless first inning. There's a throw to first by Alexander, the runner back in time. Now the set by the right-hander throws to first again. Fuentes back safely. Didn't have to slide. The bird did chirping from the corner of the dugout. Here's the set. And the pitch, runner goes, ball is fouled to the screen. They send him again. Time on the 3-2 pitch for the one away. And a new supply of baseballs has to be brought out to the plate up by Al Clark. Clark back at the plate. Hugh Decker at first, France at second, and the Brimigan umpiring at third. Same umpire as the Tigers had in the Milwaukee series. Now the 3-2 pitch again. There goes the Wendy's. It is a ball low. Walked him, and there are two men on with one away. That'll bring up Ben Ogilvy. It'll be interesting to see how well Ben can uh, swing with that bad right arm. Ralph Hauk, uh, when we were talking about the starting lineup, he said, well, Staub won't be in there because he's got a bad side, and Ogilvy is playing, although he's uh, hurting and really can't take a full swing. Ralph said, I'll have the Ogilvy bump three times. Well, we'll see. Two men on, one man down. Then hitting 271. We're in the first inning. And he takes the strike. Then swings so hard. If he cut down his swing about 25%, it's still be a big swing. One strike to count on him now. Man on second, Puentes. The man on first, Mankowski. Hargrove is playing behind Mankowski. And there's a strike called. Two strikes on Ogilvy. Steve Kemp waits on deck for the Detroiters. They've got a scoring opportunity in the opening inning. Two men on, one man down. Two quick strikes across on Ogilvy. Alexander to the set position delivers. Here's a ball in too close. Jack knifes out of the way of that one. One and two to count on Ben. Kowski can get a very big lead at first base with the first baseman Hargrove behind him. Now the pitch. It's a check swing. Ball two. He almost went across. 2-2 two -two the count on Oglevy. Now Ben steps out for a moment. Alexander taking his time. Ogilvy waiting. Here it comes. He swings and misses. Uh, got him on a breaking pitch that I believe was low and outside. He strikes off. And the batter will be Kemp. Kemp batting 264 in exactly 30 games. He has five home runs and 17 runs batted in. So Alexander has now walked one, struck out one, and given up a hit. The outfield will uh, defend uh, straight away against Mr. Camp. And the batting next will be Thompson. Cloudy skies in Arlington, Texas. Now 
being set by Alexander. The pitch is a slow curve. It's in uh, close. Ball one. Talking to some of the Ranger players, they say they like to play down here because they can find the places to live very near the ballpark. Got sort of a little town atmosphere out here. Easy to get around. The one-two delivery. Swing and there's a line drive base hit the right field. Three coming over the field. The ball rounding third is Quintus. He's headed for home. He'll score. The throw goes into second. And on the third goes Mankowski on the RBI single by Kemp. And the Tigers have a one to nothing lead in the opening inning. Kemp delivers a single to right. And the Tigers jump ahead. Here's Jason Thompson stepping in. Jason hitting 255. Of the RBI leader on the team with 21. He is tied with Oakley. And for the home run leadership, each has six. Now, uh, two singles and a walk in between, producing a Detroit run and putting them out in front. We're in the very first inning in Texas. Mankowski on at third, Kemp on at first. And uh, Jason looks at a curve across for a strike. Infield uh, back now, except for the first baseman, Hargrove, holding with a runner. Moved him back with a fastball. He jumped out of the way of that one. One of them on the count on Thompson. Well, we've got the old run maker, Vince Desmond, here with us. He produced one for the Tigers today. Alexander into the set position. And the others. Here's a bombing ball on the right side. Bump Wells comes over. Gloves it. Here's the flip over to Hargrove, and the inning's over. Thompson is out second to first. The side retired. The Tigers get one. One run on two hits and a walk. No errors. Two runners are left. At the end of a half inning, Detroit won. Texas coming to bat. When Fred Cousins goes to work on the Marathon Pipeline in Powell, Wyoming, he doesn't work alone. He gets together with guys like Tom Graham, Merle Severs, and John Sparger. And together they go about the business of maintaining the pipeline. Fred Cousins could work alone. The job wouldn't get done as well, or at all, without the help of Tom, Merle, and John because each of them can do something the other one can't. So they get together to do it better. A company is like its people, because it is people. When Marathon found oil, our oil people got together with some pipeline people who got together with some refining people who got together with some service station people so we could do it better. We got got together to do it better. Dave Brosma, the young right-hander, ready to go to work now. Dave, uh, with a one nothing lead, the Tigers scoring there off Alexander one time. Brosma has won three and lost on first time out against the Rangers. He's completed his tune-up tosses. He's about ready to go to work. Rose will beat Boston, you remember, in April on a four-hit shutout. He beat the Brewers in Detroit on seven hits, and then he beat the, beat the Brewers again on five hits the last time out. So he's three and all, and now faces uh, Claudel Washington, who will be leading it off for Texas. Claudel batting 323. Two home runs for the left hand batter with uh, 10 RBI. And it's low, the first pitch to him. Milt May doing the catching tonight. Thompson at first, who is playing second. Wagner at short, and Mankowski at third. Now the pitch by the Rose is swung on and fouled away, right down below it. One and one, the count on Claudel. In the outfield, the Tigers have uh, Kemp in left, LaFleur in center, and Ogilvy in right. Here's a cut and a miss by Washington. One and two, the count on him. the center fielder playing Claudel a little bit to the left side. Here's the wind up in the pitch. 
swing of the bounding ball deep first, gloved by Thompson. He'll toss to Rosemont, covering and out at first is Claudel Washington. Bert Campanaris, the veteran shortstop, ready to step in. Breeze uh, coming in from the outfield, almost in center field, maybe right center. And it is a strong breeze this evening. one nothing Tigers in the lead. Campy bent at the knees, waiting, standing near the plate, takes the curve across. He's batting 3-0-3. Three three. Here's a curve low. We asked Dick Williams uh, one time after he left Oakland who he thought the most valuable player he had on that ball club day in and day out, and he said Campanaris. Here's the wind up in the pitch. A chopper hit toward third. It'll go foul. One and two, the count on Burke. When the uh, Tigers finish this series, they'll go into Cincinnati for the exhibition game, and we will broadcast that game on our Tiger Network. Here's the pitch. It is a curve outside. That's that Sandlot Benefit Exhibition game in Cincinnati. Mark Frederick coming back into action. And that's been added to our broadcast schedule. Now, Rosma is going to get another ball. What time does that game start, Paul? At 7 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock, so we'll be on the air at 6.45 that evening. The Bird will uh, make his uh, debut for the year in relief. Here's the 2-2 pitch now coming up from Rosemont. Campy takes strike. Called. He stood there by the side of the road and watched that one go by. Struck him out. Two down. Nobody on. Mike Hargrove will bat next. Number 21. Mike Hargrove. Left hand batting first backer. Hargrove hitting 310. Some pretty impressive batting averages here in this uh, Texas lineup. Well, those Cubs will have some impressive batting averages after today. They scored 23 runs. Beat San Diego 23-6 to at Wrigley Field with seven home runs to their credit. Now the Rose pitches, and it's a swing and a fly ball to right. Here's Ogilvy coming in. He makes the catch on the run toward the diamond. Nothing across for Texas at the end of one. Detroit one, Texas nothing. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Provided they're accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right. And there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 Bat Boys will be picked on June the 2nd. Right, Katie? Right, 22 winners. One finished Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger iron-on patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th and sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Didn't that be that person? Well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. Just so you'll know, WJR presents Town and Country the first thing every morning at 5. This is Jim Garrett inviting you to join Tom Campbell and me on Radio 76. Milt May coming up now. Milt's got a five-game hitting streak on the line. Left-handed batting catcher hitting 306. To be his 99th time at bat this year. One nothing. The Tigers scored in the first on a single by point. Is to walk to Mankowski and a single by Kemp. Doyle Alexander, the tall right-hander, working on the mound for the Rangers this evening in the first of a two-game series. Outfield straight away on May, and he swings and taps one toward Campanaris. He charges to his right, gloves it, throw to first to Hargrove, got in. So the leadoff man in each of the two innings for the Tigers has bounced to shortstop on the first pitch. 
John Watkins uh, coming up. John is used as the designated hitter tonight. We told you Rusty Staub has an ailing side. Watkins first batting 273, a couple of home runs and five runs batted in. This is the uh, second uh, city on the Tigers' 11 day, 11 game, four city trip. That includes the exhibition at Cincinnati. There's a strike call on Watkins Park. Milwaukee, Texas, Cincinnati, and Chicago are the stops on this one. Tigers coming home on May the 24th to battle the Angels in a night game. Swing as they drive to left, going back. Washington, he's there, makes the catch. Two down, nobody on, and Mark Wagner will be the Tiger batter, the number nine hitter, with a batting mark of 140. Mark with one home run, he's knocked in three runs. This is his 19th game. It's a shot to center field, a base hit for Mark. He lines one into center, fielded by Benicus. And rifled back in the diamond. That is the third Tiger hit off Alexander. All three have been singles. It's Ron LaFleur as they come around again. Ron the bounce to shortstop his first time up. Outfield straight away on him. Alexander holds it at the belt. Now delivers a low fastball to Ron Ball one. a little deeper now at third. He's gone back a step or so. A little bit over near the line. Set and the pitch. He takes the ball in close. That was a fastball. 2-0 to Conan LaFleur. The pitch on the way. It's in too close and low. Ball three on run. One nothing to short of a Texas second inning. Now the set by Alexander. He delivers. Strike call right over the plate. Still daylight down here in Texas. Flip over to first base. He's back in time. Alexander ready again. The runner goes. The ball is swung on. Hit up the middle. There goes Bump Wells over to grab it. Throw to first. He got him. And the side retired. No runs. One hit. No errors. And one man left. And at the end of one and one half innings, Tigers one ranges nothing. It's up to you to keep the rally going in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. See if you can get on base with this one. Who was the last American leaguer to win the Triple Crown? Take a little time and think it over and relax with a cool, refreshing Labatt's beer. The answer... Carl Yastrzemski of the Boston Red Sox in 1967. Yaz hit 326 with 44 home runs and 121 RBIs. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt. Call for Labatt. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. Labatt's Blue is available in selected markets throughout Michigan. coming to bat. Willie's won himself a lot of new friends down here in Texas. Stepping in to face his former teammate, Dave Rosema. Will batting uh, 315. He takes a strike call. Rosema gave him a breaking ball. Horton has eight home runs and 17 RBIs. Deep to left on the Here's the pitch to him. 
He swings and pops the foul. It'll be out of play. Back of the plate. That's Paul's for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Look for partly cloudy weather tonight with some widely scattered showers. Low temperature near 60. Wednesday and Thursday, partly sunny and continued warm. High in the upper 80s. Right now, partly cloudy and 82. You're listening to WJR Detroit. Horton stepping back in now. Two strikes to count on him. Roseman gets his sign from Milt May and uh, goes into the emotion. Delivers. Here's the ball outside. John McGuire, big Tiger fan from Flint out here at the ball game, trying to root the Tigers in this evening. Sending special regards back to Pete Sark. Here's the pitch. It's a ball missed the inside corner. And all of us with the Tigers would like to send a special birthday greeting to Mr. Lou Matlin, promotional director of the Tigers. Here's the motion and the 2-2 pitch. He swings at a bombing ball to third. Mankowski backs up the pass it. Long throw to Thompson. Got him. One up and one away. Tom Grave, uh, the Michigan product, coming up now. Well, it was the injury to Tom Grieve that actually got Willie Horton in the lineup down here when he first came down. Tom had been the designated batter. He got on the disabled list. Luke Casey told us that uh, he had told Willie that he probably wouldn't be able to play very much. But then because of the injuries, Will got in there and uh, did the job. Grieve hitting 184. He takes a changeup over for a strike. He's certainly doing the job. He leads the team in RBIs. He's hitting 318 for Texas. Three home runs in one game. There's a check swing, I believe, that Clark ruled out a ball. I'm not sure. Let's see. The scoreboard goes up with strike two. The ball popped out of the mid of Milton May. And Mr. Clark will dust off the plate. Interestingly enough, Willie hit those homers on uh, Sunday when he was playing left field. The only time he's played in the outfield for Texas. Then after three of them, uh, they took him out. Yeah, he said he apparently he asked to come out. It's a slow curve outside. We'll make it a one-two count now. Apparently that's what happened. That other one was a strike. One and two, the count on Green. One nothing. Tigers lead them in the second inning at Texas. Rose delivers. Low and away. Two-two, the count on him now. Now, Rosma going uh, back of the mound to rub up that baseball a little bit. Generally, uh, Dave doesn't take much time between pitches. Now, up on the hill to get his sign, go to work again. The 2-2 delivery. It is a strike called. He struck him out. That's the second strikeout recorded by Rosma. And both on call third strike. Toby Hara coming to bat now. Over for the moment. Toby not only spells his name the same way backwards and forward, but uh, you can uh, work his uh, numeral the same way, too. Number 11. Two out, nobody on. Hara batting 282, slices one into right center. There goes LaFleur over. He's got it in the side out, one, two, three. Easy inning for Rosma. At the end of two, it's the Tigers one, Texas nothing. WJR presents the news when you need it most. Every hour on Radio 76. Dave White, WJR News. I'm Bill Nordstrom, WJR News. I object basically to the bonding uh, because it's a uh, idea of uh, spend now and pay later. Jim Martin, WJR News. Jennifer Moore, WJR News. We need hard evidence that their position or the allegation regarding another interpretation of their death is indeed fact. Tom Campbell, WJR News. Rod Hansen, WJR News. I think that they're almost all in the trees. Uh, I'm looking at ways to save energy. Mike Kelly, WJR News. Let the people vote in November 78. And if people say yes, they're telling their legislators yes. I'm Gene Fogel, WJR News. Tim Jones, WJR News, the state capitol. The news you need every hour on the hour from WJR Radio 76. If you're looking for a reason to slow down and take a mid-morning break, I have several, including the crew from Studio B, great music, and much more. I'm Jimmy Lott. Join me at 10 on WJR. Tigers 
Rangers coming to bat now. They've got one run, three hits. The Rangers, no runs in two hits. We've gone to two innings here in Texas. And it'll be teed off for Winnie's, but he's off for the Tigers. He scored the game's only run. He singled in the first with one out, took second on a walk, and came home on a single by Kemp. So that's the early story in Texas. And here's a Tito standing in, batting left-handed. He'll be followed by Mankowski and then Ogilvy. Outfield to left on uh, Fuentes. He butted his way on the first time. There's a strike call. Third baseman, uh, Hara, in close to third, about even with the base. Here's a ball in too close. One and one, the count on Fuente. Still a breezy evening down in Texas. Now the motion in the pitch. Swing and a pop-up near the plate. Sunberg out in front, calling for it, has it. About five feet in front of the plate. Fuente is out. And Mankowski, who walks the first time, will be the batter. Bill fouled off a couple of pitches before he earned that walk from Alexander. His fine hitting has been rewarded by moving him up to number three. Of course, the, that's partly due to the fact Staub is out of action. They've been timing the pitches here. Alexander, 84 miles per hour. Rosma, 82 miles per hour. Here's a ball low. They don't have any speed limit on those either. It's that 55 mile per hour doesn't go. Here's the wind up and the pitch. He swings and misses. That was a bad pitch. One and one. I don't uh, know where the man is who's doing the time. And do you, Paul? Is he upstairs or down I think right. I think just down to our right here. And he's on the same level we are. Yeah. Upstairs. There's a fly ball lifted out of play to left field. Foul back in the seat. Young lady not looking, walking down the aisle, and that one almost got her. One and two, the Connor Mankowski. Here it comes. He swings to the bounding ball deep first. Hargrove makes the play all by himself, and they are two Tigers out. Ogilvy, who fanned his first trip, steps up now for time number two. Let's uh, take a quick look at some of the scores now. Many of the games ahead of ours. Dorado, Milwaukee, nothing, nothing at the end of one. Cleveland leads Minnesota 2-0 in the second. Oakland beat, oh, New York beat Oakland 5-2 in 16 innings this afternoon. That takes care of the American League. Other game's not on the way. There's a swing, and I believe that Sunberg was hit by the bat. He has gone down on his back. Luke Casey is coming out there, and the uh, trainer, Dick Martin, has come out also, and Sunberg seems to be hurt. I think it was the back swing, Ernie. Uh, in other words, uh, Benji followed through with that vicious cut of his. Uh, the bat just came all the way around and uh, hit Sunberg on the head. I really can't tell, but the, the way he reacted, that had to be it. They're touching the right side of uh, his head, uh, the right temple of Sunberg now. Lucchese down there, uh, looking at the helmet that, uh, you know, it's a partial helmet, has just kind of a, a little beanie uh, type helmet that the catchers use. The trainer, Bill Ziegler, administering to him right now. Oh, I think the team doctor has come out, too. Who is Dr. Uh, Makoski. And he's taking a look at Sunberg. Sunberg is conscious. He is feeling himself, uh, his uh, temple, trying to point out exactly where he was hit. So I don't know whether he lost consciousness or not, but he went down very, very quickly and is still on his back right behind the plate now uh, he's being uh, helped up Ooh. he's in a sitting position right now i would imagine that there are a lot of little uh, little uh, planets and stars uh, appearing before the eyes right now fine young catcher in jim sunberg 
Well, we may get a new catcher here, too. I saw um, Lucchese signal over toward the bullpen. Bill Fahey is the normal replacement for Sunberg. He's still uh, sitting propped uh, behind the plate. I don't think they want to bring him up too quickly here. They may call for a stretcher. Someone is racing around in the dugout. The only thing I can explain is because, of course, we don't have the advantage of a reprise of a instant replay. But that it appears that the backswing of Benji's swing hit Sunberg on the right temple with the bat. Well, he's being carried off now. Lucchese and trainer Bill Ziegler helping him off along with the team physician. And we're waiting for another catcher to make his appearance here. In the meantime, Doyle Alexander uh, continues to loosen up out of the mound. He's taking care of the first two Tigers here in the third inning. Ogilvy at the plate. Benji over by the on-deck circle now. He has a one-strike count on him. And it will be Fahey coming in to replace Sunberg. They'll give him a couple of warm-up catches. And perhaps a throw. Yeah, he's going to throw down the first base just to loosen up a little bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. Bill had been down on the bullpen for the Rangers. So he's coming in to replace Sunberg here in the third inning with two outs and nobody on board. Ernie? I was talking to Bill before the ball game. He's a young man from Detroit. He wanted to send greetings back to his folks. He's in the ball game now, replacing the injured Jim Sunberg. Well, as soon as we get some kind of report on Sunberg, we'll pass it right along to him. Oakley at the plate. The county strike one on Ben. They are two out of the third. The Tigers lead Texas one to nothing. Alexander, the right-hander, ready to go to work for the Rangers again. And he delivers. Ben takes the ball outside. Outfield deep. A little bit to right on him. Not much. Infield back. Waiting on a 1-1 delivery. Here it comes. He swings and misses. That was a changeup. 1-2, the count on Ogilvy. Next batter will be Steve Kemp, who knocked in the game's only run. Then takes a high, hard one. Two balls and two strikes. Two out. Tigers lead one to nothing in the third inning in Texas. Alexander checks his time with the catcher, Fahey, and delivers. There's a cut on the miss. He struck him out. Now the Tigers go down one, two, three. In their third inning, we go to the last half of third. It's Detroit. One and Texas nothing. When Bob McDaniel goes to work at a cat cracker at the Marathon Refinery in Robinson, Illinois, he doesn't work alone. He gets together with Eldon Cooper, Keith Mason, and Bernard Ferguson, and together they go about the business of turning heavy oils into gasoline and fuel oil. Bob McDaniel could work alone. The job wouldn't get done as well or at all without the help of Eldon, Keith, and Bernard each of them brings something special to the job. They get together to do it better. A company is like its people, because it is people. When Marathon found oil, our oil people got together with some pipeline people, who got together with some refining people, who got together with some service station people, so we can do it better. together to do it better. Well, Mr. Rosner, ready to go to work in the third against Texas. He set down the first six range of batters in the opening two innings. It'll be Bob Wells, the switch batter to lead off against him. Bob playing second base. And batting 282. He'll be batting left-handed against uh, Rosemont. And the pitch is 
He's in close. Ball one. Here's a strike call. He ran up the zip to bunt. One and one. They count on him. second and rode home on a double by Washington. Now Bert Campanaris, who put a call third strike, his first tip steps in again. Outfield not deep there straight away on uh, Campy. Washington uh, coming off the back. Pretty good size lead for Claudel. And Campanaris takes a curve very wide, low and away. The game tied down to third. Hargrove waits on deck. Here's Rosa's sex delivery to Campanaris. He takes the ball low over the plate from low. 2 0 oh on Burt. Just about dark now down here in Texas, 8.27 at Texas time. Rosemus ready, delivers. There's a chopper hit foul on the ground. Over two at the box seat. One run, three hits, no errors for Detroit. The Rangers have one run, one hit, and no errors. We're in the third inning at Arlington Stadium. This is the first of a two-game set down here. Tomorrow night we'll see John Hiller make a start against Gaylord Perry. Now the set by Rosma. The 2-1 pitch all the way. Runner goes to third. Throw by May. He's wide into left field and another run will score. Washington comes home. May threw the ball wide past Mankowski. And the run scores to make it 2-1 to one section. It'll be a stolen base and then an error charge to Milk May. Washington steals third. And Tom home on the error by the catcher, Milk May, who overthrew Mankowski at third. And Texas has gone in front in a hurry. Two to one in the third inning. Three balls and one strike on Campanaris. He bunts and fouls the ball back of the plate. It's an unusual maneuver, bunting with a 3-1 count. Mankowski is still deep over there third. Checks his sign, full count delivery. Swung on a bounding ball to third. Good stop by Mankowski. Throw to Thompson, got him. And the side retired. But there's been Ranger damage. They picked up a couple, two runs on one hit, a walk, a stolen base, and an error. And nobody left on the bases. At the end of three, Rangers two, the Tigers one. We interrupt this program with an emergency action notification system broadcast because of threatening weather conditions. This is an emergency action notification. A severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 10.15 tonight for persons in Wayne and Oakland counties. An area of severe thunderstorms was indicated by radar in eastern Livingston and eastern Washtenaw counties and is moving toward the east at 30 miles per hour. A funnel cloud was reported northeast of Saline at 8.45 tonight. Be prepared to move to a place of safety if threatening conditions are sighted. Repeating, a severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 10.15 tonight for persons in Wayne and Oakland counties. An area of severe thunderstorms was indicated by radar in eastern Livingston and eastern Washtenaw counties and is moving toward the east at 30 miles per hour. This station has interrupted its regular programming for an emergency action notification system broadcast. We now rejoin the program in progress. Tigers scored first in this game. They got a run on a single by Kemp in the first inning, but the Rangers with two out and nobody on came back in the third. Walked to Benicus. He stole second, came home on a double by Washington. Washington stole third and went 
home when May threw the ball to the outfield. So it's two to one Rangers. Let's go to the fourth now and tune in on Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, thank you very much. Steve Kemp to lead it off for the Tigers here in the fourth inning against Doyle Alexander. Kemp drove in the Tiger run in the first inning with a single. He bunts foul behind the plate. Steve trying to catch Hera sitting a little deep there back of third base. Hera at third, Campanaris at second, at short rather, Wills at second, and Hargroves at first for the Rangers. In left field, Claude L. Washington at Spinikas in center, and Grieve in right. Bill Fahey replacing the injured Jim Sundberg working behind the plate. Doyle Alexander on the mound. He's struck out two, walked one. The pitch to Kemp swung on, a bounce to third. Harrow picks up the skimmer, throws to first and got him. One up and one away in the Tigers' fourth inning. That'll bring up Jason Thompson. Jason ended the first inning by grounding out the Wills at second. Let's pause now for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. The weather for Greater Detroit, partly cloudy tonight. Some widely scattered showers, low near 60 tomorrow. And Thursday, partly sunny, continued warm, high upper 80s. At 931, it's cloudy and 77. This is WJR Detroit. Thompson bounced one over the mound that uh, could not be handled by Alexander. And at shortstop, Campanaris came in, made a dive for it, picked it up, and then fell as he tried to throw the first base. And Thompson is awarded an infield single. So Jason reaches first with one down here in the Tiger fourth inning. Here's Milt May. The Tigers now with four hits. They've all been singles. One an infield single, the other a bump single uh, of the four hits. Milt grounded out to short his first time up. Got a five-game hit streak going. Thompson at first with a short lead. Infield and outfield uh, both about straight up on the left-hand hitting May. It's outside and low, ball one. Alexander with four wins and one defeat so far this season in his first uh, year as a Texas Ranger. Into the stretch. The pitch to the plate, Thompson goes. It's bounced to the right side. Wills has only one play. That's at first. So May gets the ball to the right side as they sent Thompson. And Jason has moved into scoring position at second base. Up there are two out now, and it's up to the Tigers' designated batter for tonight, John Wackenfuss. Rusty Staub out of action, missing his first game of the season. He has played in every uh, one of the Tiger games, this being game number 33. Rusty had been the DH in the first 32 games. Walkenfuss batting now uh, as the DH in the number eight spot in the batting order. Stop with a an injured side. Sitting this one up. Thompson at second, two down. The pitch from Alexander. It's in the dirt. Fahey blocks it, keeps it in front of him. John lined out to Washington and left his first time up. Two games in which he's appeared. Walking bus has gone two for four. Here's the set. And the pitch to Johnny B. He takes the strike on the outside corner. A very stiff wind blowing in from center field here tonight. Always a wind in Texas. Now, Alexander looks back at second. The pitch to the plate. Check swing, but it's a strike on walking bus. Tigers got a run in the first inning on Kemp single to right. Well, what is it reached with a one-out bunt single? Moved to second when Mankowski walked. And then Kemp singled with two out to get the Tiger run home. The Rangers picking up two runs in the third inning to take their two-to-one lead. The pitch to walking bus. It's in the dirt. Ball two, strike two. With two out, the walk to Benicus. He stole second and scored on the double into the right field corner by Claude L. Washington. Washington then stole third and continued on in when May's throw went over the glove of Mankowski in the left field for an error. Two balls, two strikes on walk and bus, two down. A man in second. The look 
look at Thompson. And the pitch to Fuss. He swings and pops a foul down the right field line back in the seat. Not getting around on that pitch from Alexander. A reminder, we'll be broadcasting the exhibition game from Cincinnati on Thursday evening. It's an early starter, the Sandlot Benefit Exhibition Game. Gets underway at 7 o'clock, and there will be a pregame program. The award-winning Ernie Harwell pregame show will be heard at 6.45. Here's the set, the pitch to walk and buzz. Check swing and blown away. Full count on John. He was tempted, but he held off. Tigers actually just making a quick stop in Cincinnati to play that exhibition contest. It's a... Uh, little detour on their flight from Dallas to Chicago for a weekend series with the White Sox. Here's the 3-2 pitch to walk in first. He swings and misses Turkey Mark. Well, that ends the Tigers' threat in the fourth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. Here come the Rangers to bat in their half of the fourth. It's Texas 2, Detroit 1. We're batting in the cleanup spot in the Labatt baseball trivia game. And here's the pitch. Name the pitcher who hurled a perfect game for 12 innings, but lost the game 1-0 in the 13th. Take a break and think about it over a cool Labatt's beer. It was Harvey Haddix of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The heartbreaking loss came on an error, a sacrifice, and Joe Adcock's double as the Braves sunk the buckles. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt. Call for Labatt. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. Labatt's Blue is available in selected markets throughout Michigan. face the Texas Rangers here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Mike Hargrove to lead it off. Mike lined out to Ogilvy his first time up. Good hitter. He's again uh, hitting above the 300 mark this year. First baseman, Mike Hargrove. Hargrove at the moment hitting 307 as he steps in. He'll be followed by Horton and Greve. Field actually shaped him a little to the left while the infield plays him to the right side. Rosemar struck out three, walked one. That walk hurt him with two out in the third inning and set up a two run burst by the Rangers. First pitch is low for ball one. The 20 year old right hander into the motion, the pitch to Hargrove that jams him inside ball two. Home runs 12 RBIs this season for Mike. American League's Rookie of the Year in 1974. Rosma delivers a call strike. John Hiller to get his first start of the season uh, tomorrow night against the veteran Gaylord Perry, who's seeking to become the third pitcher in the history of baseball to win 100 games in each league. He's one away. The pitch swung on a bouncer to the right side. Thompson charges, has the big hop, makes the play unassisted at first base. Hargrove is retired, bouncing out to first. That'll bring up Willie Horton, and uh, again, met by a round of cheers here at Arlington Stadium. In his first trip tonight, Horton bounced out to Mankowski at third. Willie the Wonder. Roseman delivers. There's a pop-up toward third. Mankowski is calling for it. Now he's drifting in the foul territory. It makes the catch. Horton beers up. And Mankowski two down. Well, the base is empty. And the batter will be Tom Greve. Interestingly enough, uh, talking with young Dave Roseman down in spring training when he was a non-roster pitcher, he uh, recalls the days he used to come down 
WJR News Update. President Carter says he's going to submit national health care legislation to Congress next year. Carter told the UAW convention in Los Angeles he is committed to a workable national health insurance program. Vice President Walter Mondale is under heavy guard in Madrid, Spain, following a bomb explosion at a U.S. center earlier today. Mondale had conferred with Spain's King Juan Carlos and praised the progress Spain is making toward democracy. The Michigan House narrowly amended a budget bill to take state police patrols off freeways in Detroit and the rest of Wayne County. The measure faces strong opposition in the Senate. The state Senate's Commerce Committee today approved a measure to raise the legal drinking age in the state to 19. The Michigan Court of Appeals has upheld the constitutionality of the state's controversial single business tax. Wayne State University law professor John Moat formally announced as a candidate for mayor of Detroit. The Detroit temperature, 80 degrees. I'm Gene Fogel. Whether you're coming or going, WJR, Detroit's good sport, has the information you need with J.P. McCarthy mornings and Mark Avery afternoons. Keep score with Radio 76. Here come the Tigers to bat in the fifth inning. Tigers have four hits. The Rangers have only one hit off Dave Roseman, but the Rangers lead it two to one. Tigers four hits uh, scattered a bit. They managed to get two hits and a walk in the first inning. Off Doyle Alexander, and that accounted for their one run. The RBI single by Steve Kemp. Here's Mark Wagner, who singled with two down in the second inning. He takes a ball outside. Ball one on Mark. LaFleur and Fuentes will follow here in the Tiger fifth inning. The right-hander Alexander kicks and fires on the corner for a strike. Rangers acquired Alexander as a free agent in November of last year. Dodge's his head has the sign. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Wagner outside for a ball. Working with both Baltimore and New York last year, Alexander won 13 and lost 9. He pitched two shutouts against the Tigers. His windup and the 2-1 pitch. Ground ball to first. Hargrove has it. Will make the play unassisted. Uh, Wagner is retired here in the fifth inning, out number one. Uh, to bring up Ron LaFleur, Hitler's in two trips against Arco, against Alexander. He is bounced out to short and to second. Uh, Alexander, 6'3", weighs 190 pounds, looking in, getting the sign from Bill Fahey. Takes the shoulders a little bit. Now winds and delivers. Strike called on Ron. Alexander is fan three and we three. Now the pitch. It's low. A ball on the strike on the floor. Now since the this franchise moved from Washington. The Rangers have had great success against the Tigers. Alexander Wills and delivers a bouncer foul to the left side. That's the Tigers, the only team in the Eastern Division of the league that the Rangers have a winning record against. They met once before this season, and that's the game that Tiger fans and the Tigers themselves would like to forget. 13 to zip. Texas. Two count on the floor, one out, nobody on. High ball two. Rangers lead two to one here in the top of the fifth inning. Now the two-two pitch. Ball three outside. Hello. 
those Cubbies have really been hot in Chicago. They're surprising everybody. And what a day they had today against the San Diego Padres. 23 runs, 24 hits, winning a game 23 to 6. A pitch to the floor. He swings late and fouls that one off the handle back into the seat. Just barely got a piece of that one. Uh, Ron is up front of the plate, really, and uh, punches that ball to right field. He's usually coming around a bit late. Looks at the ball a lot longer than most. The pitch to him. Swung on and punched foul to the right side again. Back up into the seat. The floor hitting 239 at the moment. Ron not off to the good start that he had last year. As a result, his stolen base total is considerably down this season. He just simply hasn't been on base as much. There's the 3-2 pitch to him. Ground ball to second. Wills has the middle hop. Let's throw to first. Gets LaFleur two down in the Tiger fifth inning. Here's Tito Polentes. Tito laid down one of those nifty punts of his. Uh, as a left-hand batter, he has shown good bat control. Just pokes it past the charging third baseman to the hole at short. And uh, he has picked up several punt hits that way this season. One for two tonight for Tito. Base is empty, two down, top of the fifth inning. The pitch from Doyle Alexander. It is in the dirt for ball one. Alexander now 26 years old. He's been around, though. Originally in the Dodgers system. The pitch to Brett is swung on him. Off the third. A high hopper for Hera across the diamond in plenty of time to get Fuentes. The Tigers go down 1-2-3 in the top of the fifth inning. And here come the Rangers to bat. They lead it. Texas 2, Detroit 1. You, it's Norman, the Detroit Newsboy. Anybody home? Out here. I'm cleaning the garage. Oh, hi, Mr. Bobby. I see you're cleaning the garage. Norman, you got a mind like a... Uh, Steel trap? Lint trap. Yes, sir. Anyway, I've got a swell idea on how to get rid of all this stuff in the garage. Oh, here. yeah? Detroit News, real cheap classifieds. Uh-huh. And what might those be? Well, they're want ads, and they're real, real cheap. cheap. Yes, sir. There's a $20 plan that gives you two lines for 14 days for the price of only five days. Well, gee, that's uh, real, real cheap. cheap. Yes, yeah. sir. And we've also got a $15 plan and a $10 one, too each of which also represents significant savings. Well, hey, kid, thanks for the tip. Maybe. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Bowlby, but you aren't throwing out that neat gorilla suit, are you? Well, that thing, yeah. Gee, I've always wanted a... Do uh, you suppose I could try it on? Right ahead. Gee, thanks, Mr. Bowlby. I'll just... Uh-oh. It's stuck. Well, I guess you'll have to wear it. Well, I say to my customers. Just uh, tell them your duck suit's in the cleaners. My duck suit's yeah, in the cleaners. Yeah, that'll work. Detroit News Real Cheap Classifieds. Call 977-7500. It's a way to sell almost anything... For next to nothing. It's the last of the fifth inning here at Windblown Arlington Stadium uh, in Texas, located about halfway between Fort Worth and Dallas on the Fort Worth Dallas Turnpike. That makes sense. Perfect. Arlington uh, is basically a community of industrial warehouses and buildings and homes. Downtown Arlington doesn't really exist. Ready to go in the bottom of the fifth inning, Toby Herra leading it off, and he takes the strike. Dave Rosma has pitched very well, but he made uh, one slip in the third inning when he walked Juan Benicas. And that haunted him as he stole second, scored on the double by Washington, who later stole third and came home on the air by May. Bouncer off the end of the bats of first. Thompson near the bag, fields it, and touches the bag to retire Hera. Easy play for Thompson as Toby just hit that one off the edge of the bat. That'll bring up Bump Wills, a switch hitter batting left-handed against Rosner. The son of Maury. Wells hitting uh, 258 left-handed, 324 right-handed. Batting average of 279 overall. He lined up to LaFleur his first time up. The wind-up by Rosma, the pitch to him, is taken for a strike. Mankowski is coming in very tight at third base. He's suspecting perhaps Wills could lay something down. 
He doesn't have the blazing speed his dad has, but uh, there's strike two called. But he can run. He's already picked up five steals this year. Lined up by Roseman. One up, nobody on. Outside for a ball, one and two. Rangers wearing an extra dark stripe on their left sleeve in memory of their teammate, Danny Thompson, who passed away during the offseason. Low in the dirt for a ball, two and two to Wills. Base is empty. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, the Rangers have a two-to-one edge over the Tigers, although they have just one hit off Roseman. It's a ball outside. He had him two strikes and now has missed with three straight. It's a full count now on Will. The pitch from Roseman. Swung on and popped foul. Look at some of those National League scores. Uh, four games going now. The Dodgers... Leads the Phillies four to three after six innings. Atlanta up on Montreal three to nothing after four. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati scoreless in the sixth inning. And after four innings, it's the Mets and the Giants no score. And here at Arlington, Texas, two to one, the Rangers lead the Tigers. Roseman looking in, getting his sign again from May. The motion for three two pitch. Ground ball up the middle, into center field, a base hit. Out of the reach of Fuentes, will take the big turn. Just to the left of Rosma, and uh, snuck by Fuentes out into right center field. Uh, Wills has only the second hit of the game off Rosma. It comes with one down here in the fifth inning. Catcher Bill Fahey. There's Bill Fahey, who had to be inserted into the lineup when Jim Sundberg was injured by a bat. A swing of the bat by Ben Ogilvy in the third inning. Fahey one time up against Rosma struck out swinging. Here's the set. Wills goes. It's a pitch out. The bat thrown at it. They'll throw to second. He is out at second base. The Tigers cut him down. Good throw by Milt May who had made two poor throws earlier. And this time they cut down Bump Wills. He's been caught for the fourth time this year. So there are two down. Fahey tried to help Wills. He simply threw the bat at the ball and missed it. One strike on Bill Mayer with the bases empty and two down. Put out was made by Mark Wagner on the steal attempt at second. There's a foul into the dirt at the plate. in to get a new baseball and uh, apparently didn't like the first one he got from Al Clark had a word with Al Jerry Newdecker working at first tonight Art France at second and Nick Bremigan at third well, the class second baseman of uh, another generation just the last generation Connie Ryan coaching down at third for the Rangers Brett Caney get first the pitch to the plate. Swung on and bounced foul over toward the Ranger dugout. This is apparently Grand Prairie night here at Arlington Stadium. The wind up the pitch. He takes outside. A ball and two strikes on Bill. Union High School. Uh, Bill Fahey, he swings, bounces one to Thompson. Thompson races to the bag and makes the play unassisted at first. That retires the Rangers in the fifth inning. No runs, a hit, no errors. Nobody left after five. It's Texas two, Detroit one. Where America shops. And by the Detroit News, offering you the Detroit News real cheap classified. Now, more Tiger baseball action with Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. Here's Bill Mankowski to lead off the sixth inning for the Tigers, who trail the Rangers 2-1. Bill is a walk and a bounce out tonight. 
The first pitch from the right-hander, Alexander, swung on and hit high in the air to right field. Grieve is under it, waiting, and Tom puts it away. Now, uh, Mankowski is a towering fly ball to short right for out number one. That will bring up Odlevy. Benji is uh, playing despite a very bad bruise on the upper right arm. Benji went with traveling secretary Vince Desmond to the hospital in uh, Milwaukee after being hit by that thrown pitch in the sixth inning of the nightcap Sunday afternoon. X-rays were negative. But uh, his arm was extremely sore. And still is. Strike called on Benji. He couldn't even lift the uh, right arm to eat after the game. He was back in the Tiger locker room. The Tigers uh, cleared up, ready to go here. Strike two called on Ogilvy. A good thinking fastball, low and inside to Ogilvy. One out, nobody on top of the sixth inning. Alexander has been tough. Here's the pitch to Ogilvy. Just outside, he didn't miss by much. Tigers with four singles by Fuentes, Kemp, Wagner, and Thompson. Now the one-two pitch to Ogilvy. Swung on and missed. That one up around the bill of the helmet. And he has gone down on strikes three times. Alexander with his fourth strikeout. That'll bring up Kemp now with two down and nobody aboard. A lot of the members of the Texas press talking with Steve Foucault before the ball game, their first opportunity to talk with Steve since he was traded away to the Tigers for Willie Horton. There's a pitch to Kemp. He swings. There's a base hit in the right center field beyond Wills. So Kemp is two for three tonight, has two of the Tiger hits, takes a big turn, and the ball is finally fed back into Wills. Five singles for the Tigers now with a two-out single here in the sixth by Kemp. That'll bring up Jason Thompson. The wind seems to have changed direction a little bit now. Uh, checking the pennants, the flags out of the center field flagpole. Blowing a little in from right center. As Ernie pointed out earlier, the... Traditionally, the wind uh, blows in from uh, right field here at Arlington Stadium. The set by Alexander. The pitch to Thompson. It's low and away. Ball one. But it's a swirling wind, too. There's always a wind here. But it blows in toward the plate, generally speaking, and has made this park with its uniform fence anyway a tough home run park. Jeff Burroughs noting he was happy to move to Atlanta from that in that regard. Throw to first, but Kemp gets backhand first. And Burroughs tonight hit another home run for Atlanta, his ninth of the year for the Braves. Here's the set now by Alexander. The pitch to the plate. Swung on. A drive to center field. On the run is Benica still going. He makes the catch and breaks it against the wall. A long drive to deep right center field by Jason Thompson. Hauled in by Juan Benicus. The center fielder retire the Tigers. No runs. One hit. No errors. And one left. After five and a half innings, it's the Rangers two and the Tigers one. Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning it into something people can use is another. It takes a lot of people with different skills and different talents to get that job done. We got people together we thought could do it better. And we called the company Marathon. From the driller in Alaska to the roundabout in Texas From the driver in Atlanta to the welder in Wyoming oil. We could have left the rest of the job to somebody else. But we had this idea that we could do it better. So we got people together who thought the same way we did. We got together to do it better. We Marathon. Marathon Oil Company. We got together to do it better. Now, before 
Now the Rangers come to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. At a minute past ten, here's late word from the National Weather Service in Detroit. An area of severe thunderstorms extends from near Lapeer, about 20 miles north of Pontiac, to near Metro Airport, and it's moving eastward about 35 miles per hour. Strong, gusty winds to near 60 miles per hour. Heavy rain and hail will likely accompany these thunderstorms. No report of damage has been received. A severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 10:15 for Wayne and Oakland counties. This is WJR Detroit. Play on Thompson for the Tigers having a man on with two down in the top of the sixth inning. Falling in the long drive near the wall in right center field. Blown away with a fastball by Rosma, ball one. Benicus walked and scored the Rangers' first run of that third inning. He stole second and came home on the double by Claudel Washington. Now the pitch, swung on and missed. One ball, one strike. Dave has pitched very well. Got himself in difficulty in the third inning. The fastball inside as Benicus buckles out of the way. It's two balls and a strike on one. He'll be followed by Washington and Campaneras here in the Rangers sixth inning. Benicus. Benicus. A close stance. The pitch from the right-hander. Swung on. Base hit to right field. Between first and second. Benicus picks up hit number three for the Rangers. And it brings up Cordell Washington, who doubled home Benicus in the third inning for the first Ranger run. Washington then coming on into score. He stole third and came on in on the overthrow, the throwing error by Milt May. Vern Rule is loosening in the Tiger bullpen right now. Washington, a left-hand batter. Hitting 330s and a uh, fine season thus far. Benicus has speed. Good lead at first. The pitch to the plate. It's taken for a ball a little high to Caudell. Well, the Rangers traded away Jim Umbarger to get Washington, and uh, Umbarger is now in the minor league. Oakland uh, moving him down in a recent move. Throw to first. Benicus gets back. Opener of a two-game set here at Arlington Stadium. The Rangers with a 2-1 lead in the bottom of the sixth inning. A man at first, nobody out. The pitch from Rosemont. Washington hit the high hopper to first. Thompson has it. Can't get the glove out of there. Ball out of the glove. Throw to first. Got him at first base. Jason looked at second. Had a play at second. But had trouble getting the ball out of the glove. And then realized he better get something out of it. Went to first. Rosemont covering for the put out on Washington. But the Rangers now have been in scoring position. Benicus down at second base. Well, the play goes four to one. They put out of Washington. One down. A man at second. And Campy Campanari will be the batter. Campy is struck out and bounced out to third. Tonight against Roseman. The Rose, winner of uh, three games. No defeat so far. Has pitched well, very well, and this is rookie season. Here's a set by Rosma. A look back at Benicus. The pitch is taken for a strike. Fastball on the outside corner. Rangers with two runs on three hits. The Tigers have one run, five hits. Now Rosma checks the runner at second. The pitch to the plate. Campy swings and misses. Foul tip that one, and it's in bouncing out of the mid of Mills May. Mills may have taken that one on the uh, hand. I don't know. He's walking around a little bit in the batter's box. Rosma taking a little bit extra time. Hitting 298 at the moment, over 2 tonight against Rosemont. 
Here's the set. He holds, now delivers. Swung on and fouled back into the stand behind the plate. Campy went lunging for that one. It was a high outside pitch. Campy has a pretty large strike zone, at least he feels he has, because he'll go after just about anything. Now the Rose leaning on the knee, getting the side from Mills May. Benicus at second, one down, the two-strike pitch. Fouled into the dirt, rolling over toward the Tiger dugout. John Hiller gets the start tomorrow night against Gaylord Perry. Perry's won two and dropped four for the Rangers. Hiller one and three, all in relief thus far for the Tigers. And Ernie's pregame show to begin at 8.15 again tomorrow. Don't forget the exhibition game in Cincinnati on Thursday. In a break with tradition, will be broadcast. And we'll be hitting the air at 6.45 Thursday night from Cincinnati. The stretch now by Rosler. Here's the pitch. There's a looper toward center. Here comes LaFleur. He won't get it. It drops in front of him. Benicus had to hold. He checked at third base. He didn't know whether the ball would hold up, so Benicus moves to third on the looping single to center by Campanaris. Runners at first and third. One out here in the sixth inning. That'll bring up Hargrove. Hitless in two trips against Rosma. Flint is in for a conversation with young David. Rule continues to throw down on the Tiger bullpen. Single by Campy is hit number four for the Rangers. Against Roseman tonight, Hargrove has lined to Ogilvy and bounced out to Thompson unassisted. Uh, Dave has a spot of trouble right now with runners at first and third, and what a runner he's got at first base, Bert Campanaris. Here's the set, the pitch to the plate. It's a called strike on Hargrove. Got to watch out for Campy, who has lost a little of his speed, however. He's been cut down quite a bit this year. He's tried to steal ten times and has been successful only three times. Hargrove, a good left-hand batter. A set by Roseman. And the pitch to Mike. He hits one on the ground to Thompson. Goes to second for one, and they've got the... It's a double play because Thompson made the play at first base to uh, eliminate the force. So Wagner had to make the tag on Campaneras, who tried to run out of the base path to elude him. It's a double play going 3-6. And that's all for the Rangers here in the sixth inning. No run, two hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. After six innings of play, the Rangers two, the Tigers one. Here's something you ought to know. The fresher your spark plugs, the better your car's mileage. It's just that simple. The folks at Champion tested cars like yours all across the country. They found that replacing worn plugs with a fresh set of Champion spark plugs can improve your mileage and performance. So if that sounds good to you, fill her up with Champion, the world's number one seller. Do you have room for one more on that long ride home? I'm Mark Avery with an invitation to join the carpool that we call the Afternoon Music Hall here on WJR. Three to six on the Goodwill Station. Larry is the catcher. Moving to the seventh inning here at Arlington Stadium. We're getting the attendance figures. 10,826 on hand on Grand Prairie night in Arlington. Ready for the seventh. Back to the play by play. Here's Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Pat. Hi, Miss May. Running it out. Cutter on Texas Day. Second. 
Well, the Tigers pulling a nifty double play, but Ink is not running very hard. Didn't make it to the plate before that out was made. There's a bounding foul off the end of the bat of May, and the count is one and one on Milk. Well, Benicus crossed the plate before that second out was made. The run would have counted, but uh, he didn't uh, run very hard in, and the umpires noted that the play was made at second base before Benicus touched the plate. Well, the run did not score. It is two to one Rangers. They got their two in the third. The Tigers got their one in the first. Alexander ready to pitch to the left hand of batting Tiger catcher Milk May. He swings, foul fly, lifted out of play. Well, the Tigers scored on a single by Fuentes, a walk to Mankowski, and a two-out single by Kemp. And with two out in the third, Texas scored twice, a walk to Benicus, he stole second, came home on a double by Washington. Washington stole third and came home when May threw the ball into left field. That's the story so far. We're in the seventh inning. May waiting on a one-two delivery. Swings and fouls it away, right down below it. Still a one-two counter on Milk. The Tigers beat some empty runs here. Here in California, we in some instant runs. So the Tigers is John Wyman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Been a Tigers fan for about 20 years. He's out here tonight. Here's where he pitch. He swings and strikes out. A breaking ball toward the outside. Fooled him. May goes down swinging the fifth strikeout by Alexander. One away in the seventh. Here's John Walkenfoss. He's fly to left and fan. Well, the Tiger had two for Kemp. One by Puentes, one by Thompson, and one by Wagner. And they've all been singles. Right-hander Alexander ready to go into action here in the southern inning. Rockenfuss swings and pops it up out towards second base. Wills is turning for it between the first and second. Makes the catch on the skin of the infield. Two away. Mark Wagner batting now. He singled his first time up in the second inning. His next trip in the fifth. He bounces out assisted to Hargrove at first base. Rangers, two runs, four hits, no errors. Tigers, one run, five hits, one error. Here's a strike called. He got a fastball over. Out field straight up on Mark. Next batter will be Ron LaFleur at the top of the batting order. There's a line shot to Capitaro as he drops it to the out. Bad retired, one, two, three. Here come the Rangers to bat in their seventh inning. Texas two, Detroit one. Automotive Week up there, the right time to fix up your car. Sears Automotive Center is bursting with auto supplies and accessories. Equipment and values galore during this one week special event. For example, Sears Maintenance 336 battery. One of the most worry free batteries Sears has ever sold. You should never have to add water. Regular $31.99, now only $25.99. And Sears Steel Guardsman Radio, a rugged tire built for rugged roads with two steel belts and two polyester cord radio flyers. Sears Steel Guardsman Radio, now at savings of $26 to $50 in sets of four. So get going to Sears Automotive Center during National Automotive Week. music here in Arlington as the Texas Ranger fans stand for the old seventh inning stretch. Let's take a quick look at the scoreboard before the Rangers bat in their seventh inning in the American League Toronto 2, Milwaukee nothing in the fourth inning, Minnesota and Cleveland are tied 4-4 four to four in the fifth inning, Boston, California just getting underway, Baltimore, Seattle no report yet, and this afternoon the Yankees in 16 innings beat Oakland 5-2. to two. Here's Willie Horton to face Dave Roseman. What is he's for two tonight against his old teammates. He swings and misses. Will is bounced to third base and fouled out to third. They're overshifted on him now. Mankowski, Wagner, and Fuentes all on the left side of the infield. And the outfield deep to left on Horton. 
guarding the last half of the seventh in Arlington. Horton cuts as a draft to left field. Kemp is there, has it three out. A line there to left fielder Kemp retires Willie for the third straight time. That'll bring the bat Tom Grieve, the right fielder who is struck out and bounced to third. Now the four hit for Texas, Cordell Washington with a double, Campanaris for the single, Wills for the single, and Benicus for the single. Right hand batting Grieve at the plate now, and uh, Rose delivers a ball high to him, ball one. the pitch in too close. 2-0 two oh, the count on Grieve. Toby Harrow will follow. Texas 2, Tigers 1 in the 7th. There's a strike. He got a slider across. 2-1 the count. Rusty Staub out of action. Did not even uh, dress tonight. He's up in the press box area watching the game. Here's a cut in the mid. Rusty has a full muscle in his stride. He's taken therapy and says he does not think he'll be available tomorrow, but hopes to be ready by Friday. 2-2, Two -two, the count of the right-hand batting outfield to Greaves. He swings and ups one to third. It's caught by Mankowski. Throw to Thompson. Got him. And there are two down now. Well, the last uh, inning's fastest pitch is listed here now. Alexander at 85 miles per hour and Rosemar at 84. That uh, mark has stayed right around 84 and 85 for each of the two pitches. Here's Toby Harrow. Toby's fly to center and bounced out the first. And the wind up by Rosemar. The pitch is a ball outside. His fly to broke away. Two down, nobody on. Two to one. The Rangers have the lead. They've picked up four hits. Tigers have five blows. Now Rosma into the wind-up delivers. It's a ball that hits him in the back. He's on first base. Hit by the pitch. That'll bring the bat bump Wills, the switch batter, who's had a fly to send in the single. Hit a single sharply through the box just to the right of second base. innings. Uh, Rosma had set down the opposition one, two, three. Here's Wells at the plate now. Man on first is Hara. Thompson holding on the bag with him. Set by Dave Rosma. He pitches. It's a strike on the outside corner. Steve Grilly listening in the Tiger Bowl front at the moment. Short lead for Harrow. Rosema looks over there. Now Will steps away from the plate. Bree is still coming in from the outfield. Outside, pitch out. Nothing's happening, and the count is one and one. Infielder coaching over there at third base. Here's the set now. Flip over to first. He's back in time. The two starters are still in there. Roseman and Alexander. Each has the pitch the strong game so far. Now Roseman flips the first again. He's back in time. Two out, one on. Seventh inning. Rangers lead by one. Two to one over the Tigers. Checking his final, no pain, ready to go to work. Arrow doesn't go, the pitch is outside, it was a let up. 2-1 to count on him. Mankowski wide of the bag in third, and uh, not quite even with it, he's about a step behind it. Arrow is a pretty good fast speed, he goes, the pitch is taken from three and three by May to Wagner, he is safe at second base, another steer. Third Texas stolen base. They've been cut down one time tonight. They had a 
very crucial steal in the third inning when uh, Benicus with two out on a 3-2 pitch got a walk, stole second, scored on a double by Washington. And Washington stole third and came home with the marginal run when May threw the ball into the outfield. Now they're going to walk uh, Wills intentionally. First base is open. They'll put him on now with two down. Bill Fahey, the next schedule batter. And we've got a National League final. Pittsburgh beat Cincinnati. Candelaria shut him out on seven hits. He's won five and lost none. The final was Pittsburgh three, Cincinnati nothing. Billingham took the loss, and they had 30,575 at Cincinnati. Here's Fahey coming up. The Dodgers held on to beat the Phillies six to four. Sutton the winner. He's six and all. Christmas who takes the loss. He's three and four. They had 30,000 at Philadelphia. That's the second walk-off, Roseman. Fahey swings and misses. Dave has walked two and struck out three. He's hit about it. Two men on and uh, two men out. The second time in the game that the Texans have had two runners. There's a breaking ball low, and the count on Fahey is even at one and one. Juan Benicus, who's been tough, will be waiting on deck right now. Texas ahead by one, two to one in the seventh. They've got a threat going. Two men on, two men out. Swing and a foul. They hit out of play in the dirt behind the plate. One ball, two strikes on Fahey. Fahey in the ball game after Sunberg was injured by the backlash of Ogilvy's bat and had to be removed from the game. We've not had any further word about his condition. Now, Rose has slowed his pitching pace a little bit. He digs in again against the Tiger right-hander. The set looks for the bases. He pitches. Here's a breaking ball in too close. Also a little bit low. 2-2 two -two the count on him. Outfield not very deep and uh, almost straight up on him. Infield playing back. They can play the ground ball anywhere in this situation with two downs. Now, Roseman to the stretch, looks, delivers, Fahey he swings with a bounding ball on the right side. Thompson's left the bag, Roseman covers, takes the throw, in time for the out. The winnies grabbed the ball, fired over to Roseman, who followed the precepts of covering when that ball hit to the right side. He got over there in time, and the Tigers are out of trouble. No runs on no hits, there were no errors, and two runners are left in the Texas seventh. At the end of seven, the Rangers two, the Tigers one. You're the designated hitter in the Labatt baseball trivia game. Here's the pitch. Who was the last Detroit Tiger to lead the American League in batting? Take a little time to think about it. And while you're at it, why not get yourself a cool, refreshing Labatt blue? The pride of Detroit in 1961 was Norm Cash. Cash hit a blister in 361 to lead the league. That was a great year for Cash. And the way most baseball fans celebrate a good year is by drinking a great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt and Porters Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. Labatt's Blue is available in selected markets throughout Michigan. WGR's Great Weekend is a portable pleasure package that highlights people going places and doing things. This is Bob Hines inviting you to be a part of it on WJR Radio. Tigers coming to bat of the eighth inning now. They trail the Rangers by one, uh, two to one. Alexander's held them in check. They scored a run in the first inning, a one-out single by Fuentes. Mankowski walked, and after Ogilvy struck out for the second out, Kemp delivered the single that scored the only Tiger run. The Rangers came back with two in their third, and it's stayed that way ever since. As Alexander and Rosma have dueled away here in Arlington, Texas this evening. Here's Ron LaFleur at the top of the batting order to try to get it started. Ron's bounced out three times, once to short and twice to second. Harris playing in a little bit close at third base, just inside the bag. 
Alexander, the right-hander, ready to go into action in the eighth inning. He rocks and delivers. That is a strike call. A pull moved up in the boxes of the night box, but didn't offer on it. And Harrow was charging in from third. Strike one, the count on Ron. Ruiz and Mankowski will follow here in the Tiger 8. He takes the ball. It's over but low, and the count even one and one. Two runs and four hits. No errors by Texas. Tigers one run, five hits, and one error. Here's the wind-up in the 1-1 pitch. He swings and doesn't get it. Tips the ball to the mid of Fahey. One and two, the count of the leadoff man, Ron LaFleur. Gaylord Perry pitches tomorrow night for the Rangers. John Hiller making a start for the Tigers tomorrow. Hope you'll be tuned their way for that one. That'll be the final game of this two-game set. Here it comes. He cuts and it's a bounding foul over near the Tiger dugout. One and two, the count on Ron. The only Tiger with more than one hit is Steve Kemp. He's had a couple of singles. All the Tiger hits have been singles tonight. Now the four digs into weight. The pitch is a ball outside. 2-2 two -two the count on him. The Tigers have left five runners on the bases. And the Texans have left three. They've left all three in the last two innings. Here's the motion in the 2-2 serve. He swings and it's a bombing ball toward right field. It's through for a base hit. Between Wills and Hargrove, fielded by the right fielder Greaves and flipped back into Wills, the second baseman. And the Tigers now have the tying run at first base. Luke Casey trotting out the top with his battery. Harrow's going to come over from third base to join in on the conference. And Fuentes will be the next man to bat for the Tigers. Conference is over. Luke Casey trots back to the dugout. The Reddies has had a single. He scored the only Tiger run. That was in the first inning. Then he popped to the catch in the third. He bounced to the third baseman in the fifth inning. One for three. That's the sixth Tiger hit. They've not hit their opponent. Mr. Clark, the plate umpire, comes out and says, All right, boys, let's get the show moving. And Tito about ready right to step in. Alexander has struck out five. He's walked one. Walk came in the first inning. Well, they're about halfway up in the infield. Hargrove will hold with the floor at first base. Uh, Ron right now has a fair size lead. Here's a set by Alexander. And they pitch. Tito bumps the ball right back to the pitcher. He throws the second for one. The relay to first. He's in time at the double play. He was trying to push it past the pitcher, Alexander. He hit it right to him. He fired to Campanaro to relay the hard glove, and there's two out, nobody on. Mankowski will be the next target of that. Phil is walked, bounced to first, and fly to right. will be on deck. Two to one, the Texas Rangers in the lead. Outfield straight up on Mankowski here in the eighth inning. Alexander winds and delivers a slow one that got over for a strike. Now Texas has led all the way since the third when they scored two runs after two were out. Tigers have tried to catch them all the way. There's a foul up this way. It'll be out of play. Let's pause briefly for the station identification. This is a Detroit Tiger baseball network. The weather for Greta Detroit, partly cloudy tonight. Some widely scattered thunder showers. Low temperature near 60. Tomorrow and Thursday, partly sunny. Continued warm. High upper 80s. At 1030, it's raining and 68. This is WJR Detroit. Mankowski fouls off another pitch, and the county strike two on him now. Alexander jammed him down on the hands. Two strikes on Phil. Two to one. Rangers lead. Eighth inning. Two out. Nobody on for Detroit. Alexander winds and delivers. Here's the ball low. Hey, digging that one out of the dirt. 
Alexander ready for action, delivers. Here's a fly ball it's down the line in right field, going over his grieve. Chasing near the fence, he can't get it. It's just out of play in the front row. Over past the bullpen of the Rangers. Just out of his reach. One and two, the count on Mankowski. Well, the Rangers have made uh, more of their scoring opportunities. That's for sure of this game. They scored the lead run on a throwing error by May. And Washington stealing third, came on home. May fired the ball past Mankowski into the left field corner. And right now, that's the difference in the game. Two to one, David Texas. Mankowski digging in the wait on a one-two delivery to him. He takes the low one, and the count is 2-2. Two -two. Outfield pulled it around to right just slightly. Alexander is checking his time with Fahey. Into action he goes. The pitch is a ball low. That'll make it a full count. Ogilvy waiting on deck. Tigers need one to tie and two to go ahead in the eighth inning. See what Alexander will give him now on the full count delivery. Here's the wind up in the pitch. He swings as a looping drive over the head of Campanaris into left field for a base hit. Washington feels the ball on a couple of skips and Mankowski gets the hit. That's his first. Man on, two away, and it'll be up to Ben Oglevy. The Tigers have picked up two hits in this inning, the only inning they've done that since the first. Hey, he goes out to talk with Alexander at the mound. Three Tigers without hits tonight. Ogilvy, May, and uh, Wackenfuss. Each of the others has at least one hit. Two out, one on. Ogilvy has been about three times, and Alexander has spanned him all three trips. He takes the ball low. Mankowski not venturing off very much at first base. They've got Hargrove over there holding swimming. Opens up the spot for Ben down that line a little bit. Alexander sets and deals. Here's a ball in too close. He moved him back. Two and oh, the count on Oglevy. The camp waiting on deck. Tigers got their leadoff man on in this inning, but a double play wiped him away from the bases. And Mankowski single. That's where we are now. Conference is over. Ogilvy digging in the wait on a 2-0 delivery from Doyle Alexander. The Alabama takes his set. Holds it at the belt. The others. Here's a strike. He got the outside corner. 2-1. The count on Ben. Mankowski edging off a little part in first base. Draws a throw, gets back safely, standing up. Here's a final for us from the ninth league. The Mets beat the Giants 8-1 to in New York. Kuzman, the winner, Monte Fusco, the loser. And the pitch. He swings and taps one towards first. It'll go foul. A high hopper fielded by Hargrove in foul territory. Kuzman, the winner in that game, is 3-4. and four. Monte Fusco has won two and lost six, and they had 8,000. 366 at Chase Stadium tonight. See that one? Now 2-2, two -two, the count on Ugly with two out and one on the eighth inning. Ball is loose from the Texas bullpen. Time is called. It has to be chased down by Grieve and tossed back to the bullpen. Ben digging in, waiting on a 2-2 delivery from Doyle Alexander. A little longer lead for Mankowski at first base. And here's the pitch. He takes strike. 
three called, and Ogilvy has fanned for the fourth time in the game. No runs on Stewart, no errors. One man left for Detroit. We go to the last half of the eighth inning. The Rangers, two, the Tigers, one. Now let's check on what's happened on the farm club level for the Tigers in the uh, last 24 hours. Last night, Evansville under Les Moss lost a close one at Omaha, two to one. The triplets in third place in their division of the American Association have won 16 and dropped 14. Montgomery cruised along. They beat Jacksonville 10 to 6. As Vinoy Garrison hit a first inning grand slam homer. And Michigander Terry Lynch had three hits and three runs batted in, helping Pat Underwood pick up his third win against two defeats. The Rebels under Eddie Brinkman leading the Western Division of the Southern League with 23 wins and only 12 defeats. And Lakeland's fine young pitcher Mike Chris won his sixth in a row. He has yet to lose. He went 10 innings as Lakeland turned in a one to nothing victory over Winterhaven. And the Lakeland Tigers remain in first place in the Northern Division of the Florida State League under Jim Leland. Inning in Texas, the Rangers still in front of the Tigers, two to one. And Juan Benicus, who scored the first run after walking the two out of the third inning, will be the batter. He's also been up another time and singled on that trip. One for one for Juan. Keep saying that forever, didn't you? One for one for one. Now, Rosemar ready to go to work. The right handed pitcher said it is a ball outside, ball one. Pitches have uh, both been strong tonight. There's a strike called about letter high. One of the one, the count on Benicus. It'll be followed by the top of the batting order, Claudio Washington, then Bert Campanaris. Close one all the way here in Texas. Here's the pitch. Swing and a little number hit on the ground to first base. Thompson gloves it. Back of the bag makes the play unassisted at first. And Benicus is out. One up and one away. Now the top of the batting order, Claudel Washington. He bounced the first, doubled to right field, a key hit in the game. The double drove home the first run, and then he scored the second one. In the sixth inning, he bounced out, first baseman of the pitcher covering. Claudel is stepping in. Outfield straight up on him, and uh, Mankowski even with the bag at third base. Now in a little bit. Claudel is jammed at the shoulder. Ball one. Fastball. Two to one. The Rangers lead it in the eighth. Roseman into the windup. Delivers. Here's a drive to right for a hit. He weighed in and slapped the single to right. That's his second hit. Washington on with one down in the eighth inning. The fifth hit for the Rangers. It'll bring up Bert Campanari. Short up, Bert Campanari. Magnin Puent is up about halfway on second with Thompson holding at the bag at first. Now Mankowski's a step behind third. Throw to first and Claudel's back. He's a good runner. They'll have to keep an eye on him. And Le Casey's had his charges running here tonight. A little kicking of the bag over there by the umpire New Decker to try to get it settled. Now Washington edges off. Throw to first. He's back in time. Keeping an eye on the base runner, Washington, who's uh, moving off a little farther now. Another couple of steps. Set by the rows. A pitch. It's a pitch out, but he's not moving this time. Four one the count on Campanaris. Can't be a very fine number two hitter. He can hit and run well. Lay down a bunt. And he's a little slower than he was, but he still has pretty good speed. Now the 
set by Rosemar. The runner doesn't go. He brought scoring a swing and a miss by Campy. One and one, they count on him. Two to one, the Rangers leave the Tigers. We're in the eighth inning in Texas. One on and one out for the Rangers. The set, the pitch. Not moving again. It's pitch out. Two and one. Uh, Campy takes a glimpse down to third base coach Connie Ryan. Oh, Washington uh, moving off another step towards second. Draws a throw. Gets back with a head first slide. off again. He doesn't go. The pitch is swung on and missed. Like a fastball about at the hand. 2-2 two, two, the count on Caponeri. Rangers 2, Tigers 1 in the 8th. Next batter will be Mike Hargrove, the left-handed batting first baseman. Right now they've got to concentrate on Caponeri at the plate. Washington the first base. Roseman looking in to get his sign from May. Throws to first. He's back with a head first slide. And again, Mr. Newdacker kicking that bag. Now Claudel trying to lengthen his lead at first base. Count is 2-2 on Caponeris. He's going, the pitch is swung on, hit in the air to left field, it's not deep. Here comes Kemp digging hard, can he get there? No, he can't, the ball falls in front of him. Washington heads for third, he's in safely, throw to second. Safe at second is Campanelli. They had the runner going, and the ball was hit in the short left field. Kemp charged and couldn't quite get there, had to play it on one hop. And the hit and run maneuver moves Washington into third. It'll be a single, and Campanelli goes for second on the throw to third. A little Texas leaguer dropping in safely in short left field. Man on second and the man on third. One away. And hard draw for batter. Willie Horton schedule next. Well, let's see if they'll put him on. Yep, they will. They're going to watch him. First base is open. Means a force out of the plate, a double play on the ground ball, and a right-hand pitcher against the right-hand batter. So all that contributes to the strategy here that Hauk chooses. Walking hard off to load the bases and bringing up the old Tiger Willie Horton. Ball three outside on Hargrove. to be the third walk issued by Roseman. And there's ball four. Now the bases are loaded. And the Texas crowd is standing to give Horton an ovation. Meanwhile, the Tigers are going to have a conference at the mound. Here's Willie's record tonight. He bounced to third in the second inning. He fouled to the third baseman, Mankowski, in the fourth inning. He hit a sharp line drive directly to the glove of the left fielder, Kemp, the last time it batted in the seventh inning. Oh, the bases are loaded. One man down. The Rangers lead 2-1. to one. Willie Horton against Dave Roseman. Field in double play depth. Washington the lead runner at third base. Rosner working off the set position delivers, and Willie takes the breaking ball wide. Washington at third, Campanaris at second, Hargrove at first. Two singles and a walk for the moment, but one away. Now Rosner's trying to hold it on. He was the last time of the inning. Rudy standing uh, very near the plate. Now it's going to be at position. It's a bit. He squeezes that cow down the right. Then he's looking at the back. Back in front. Big suggestions are tagged by Washington. He'll score easily. It's still put off by Wesner. It is 3 to 1 Texas. An RBI second place drive for Willie Horses. Captain Harris held his 
makes it three to one now to Rangers, and the batter will be Greaves. With two men on and two men out. The outfield will play Tom straight up. Green is stuck out and twice bounced to third base. Three to one, the Texans lead it. And the Rose were not out of the woods yet. Outfield a little bit to left now. Here's the pitch. He takes one across the plate. Cut the outside corner, strike one. Fielders a little deeper on the left than on the right. Rosma ready. And the pitch swung on and popped in the air to short right field. Here comes Ogilvy. He's under it on the run and makes the catch to retire the side. However, there's been damage by the Texans. One run on a walk and two singles and a sacrifice. A no Tiger errors. Two runners are left. We go to the ninth inning. Texas three, Detroit one. <laughs> From the pot line in Wyoming to the oil wells down in Texas, off the shore in Louisiana, to right back home in Finley. Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning into something people can use is another. We got people together we thought could do it better. And we called the company Marathon. From the waters of Alaska To the research labs in Denver From the Robinson refinery To pumping gas in Indiana We got together Hi, sports fans. Warren Pierce here reminding you that I'm here every night of the week when there is no Tiger baseball. 7 to 10 on WJR Detroit. Well, the Tigers need some instant runs here now. They're trailing by two, three to one, ninth inning. Steve Kemp to try to lead it off for the Tigers. Kemp had a couple of singles. He bounced out the third. His middle trip, two for three for the young outfielder. Alexander's gone all the way. He's scattered uh, seven Tiger hits. Here's a fly ball. Hit the right field deep. Going back is three. He's at the wall, and he makes the catch. Got it on the warning track. Long fly to right. Retires Kemp on the first pitch. Thompson will be the next Tiger batter. Well, they have announced that the x-rays on Sunberg were negative and he'll take a day's rest. He was injured, hit by the bat in the early part of the ball game and had to be replaced. That's the Texas catcher. Here's Jason now with one for three. Swings and taps one over the mound. Wills charges at second, flips it over to first. They got him by a step and a half. Two pitches and two out in the Tiger ninth inning. They're making the announcement now on Sunberg over the PA. You might get some kind of a crowd reaction here. Yep, there it is. With two down in the ninth inning, the Tigers need two to tie. They trail it three to one in the first game of two here in Texas. Alexander ready to work and delivers a fastball outside. Ball one. Watson Faust waiting on deck. Takes the strike and above the knees. Ten and one to count on him now. Alex 
Alexander into action. Pitches. Here's a foul out of play. One ball and two strikes. Alexander's been tough. The Tigers got that one run in the first inning. Single, a walk, and then the RBI single by Kemp. They've not scored since then. May at bat. One, two pitch, two out ninth. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it away. Off the mid of Faye. Still alive with a one, two count is Milk May. Taking his time getting back in there. He's making uh, Alexander wait a little bit. Here's the motion in the pitch. Swung on and fouled to the screen. One and two of the count on him. Tigers need a rally. Diamond by Alexander in the last eight innings. Now the right-hander checks his sign with his catcher, Fahey. And the motion. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. The game's over, and Texas wins it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And the final score, Texas 3, Detroit 1. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Point Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating price with Plymouth Provided they're accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right. And there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 bat boys will be picked on June the 2nd. Right, Katie? Yes, 22 winners. One from each Christmas Plymouth And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger Iron patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th. And sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Shouldn't that be that person? Well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. pitched a good ball game again for the Tigers tonight, uh, but the young 20-year-old right-hander from Grand Rapids came up empty this time, suffering his first loss. After three uh, victories, Doyle Alexander giving up a first-inning run to the Tigers and then shutting them out on five hits the rest of the way, as his teammates picked up a pair of runs in the second. An unearned run as a result of uh, a throwing error by Milt May. That made the difference and gave Texas a 2-1 lead. Then Willie Horton sacrificed fly in the eighth inning, adding an insurance run for Texas. The line score for the Rangers, three runs, six hits and no errors. They left five on base. The Tigers had one run on seven hits with one error and left six on base. Roseman now three and one. Doyle Alexander, the winner, is five and one. The game took two hours, 14 minutes to play before a crowd of 10,826. And I'll be back to recap the scoring in one minute. Now, from City National Bank, new subordinated notes that make it possible for Michigan residents to earn a steady 9% interest per year for the seven-year life of the notes. These notes are available for as little as $500 and in increments of $100 above that. The 9% interest will be paid quarterly by check or by deposit to a CMB savings or checking account. The offer for the sale of these notes is made only by the offering circular. The notes are not deposits and are not insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or any government agency and are subordinate to the claims of depositors and other creditors of the bank. For complete details on subordinated notes and how you can earn a steady 9% interest per year for the seven-year life of the notes, visit any CMB office or call 961-2311. 961-2311. Peopleworth is a gallery of people worth knowing. I'm Oscar Cornett, ready with a guided tour every weeknight during the dinner hour here on the Goodwill Station.
the Tigers jumped in front in the very first inning, but that's all they could score off Doyle Alexander tonight with one out. Tita Fuentes was safe on a bunt single. Phil Mankowski walked and then with two outs, Steve Kemp single to right to score for one is from second base. But the Rangers took the lead in the second inning. I beg your pardon, in the third inning. With two outs, Juan Benicus walked, stole second on a high throw from Milt May, got in underneath the attempted tag by Wagner. And Claudel Washington doubled into the corner in right field to score Benicus to tie the game at one apiece. And Washington stole third as May overthrew Mankowski down into the left field corner. Washington wheeled on in to score and made it 2-1 to one at Texas. The Rangers adding one more run in the eighth inning on a sacrifice fly by Willie Horton following singles by Washington and Campy Campaneras and an intentional pass to Mike Hargrove. Alexander struck out seven Tigers, walked only one, and upping his record to five and one, he's now got a career record of 12 wins and only three defeats against the Tigers. Rosemont suffers his first loss of his major league career after winning three straight. A Dave walked three, two of them intentionally. He struck out three and hit one batter. So the Rangers uh, draw first blood in this series. They've now beaten the Tigers two times in two meetings this year. The windup of a short two-game stay in Texas comes tomorrow night when John Hiller will get his first start of the season, only his second since 1972. He'll go against the veteran Gaylord Perry, who will be seeking to become only the third pitcher in Major League history to win 100 games in each league. He needs one more win. He has two wins and four defeats this year, 99 wins in the American League since coming over from the National League. And our broadcast coverage tomorrow will begin at 8.15 Eastern Daylight Time with Ernie Harwell's pregame show. That's the story from Arlington Stadium for Ernie. This is Paul Carey saying so long. Once again, the final score, the Texas Rangers 3, the Detroit Tigers 1.